Hello there, people of the internet. So, there's plenty of people that play around with plenty of different things whenever it comes to black powder. Adjust my camera angle here a little bit. And it normally revolves around making the best black powder, but out of my own curiosity, I wanted to go ahead and see what I could get away with whenever it comes with making black powder. So black powder is potassium nitrate, that's uh, saltpeter, and sulfur, and then some sort of carbon source, normally a charcoal, and that is what serves as the fuel to make black powder go whoosh, and sulfur is the bonding agent. So whenever it comes to carbon sources, people normally go to charcoal because it's just for some reason an extraordinarily good source of fuel to use in black powder but in theory other kinds of carbon should work as well the big issue is that for some reason some science nonsense <laughs> other carbon sources tend to not work very well there's a reason why we use charcoal for black powder and not other things because the charcoal just seems to be the best and there's different kinds of charcoal out there that you can use to get better results than other kinds of charcoal so i guess it all really depends on what kind of charcoal it is that you have what kind you're going to use whether or not it's like charcoal that you buy at a grocery store that's got like lighter fluid and whatnot on it or whether or not it's i don't know actual homemade charcoal that's got nothing inside of it that's more pure but I decided to go ahead and get myself some graphite and graphite is like a hundred percent pure carbon <clears throat> so that should in theory work but the thing is theories go out the window whenever you start putting things into practice I have no idea how well this stuff is going to work like insert your guess in the comments below it, and your guess is literally as good as mine my bet is that it's probably not going to work very well because if it worked very well I would have heard about it from other people saying hey this works extraordinarily well so I have found examples of people trying to make graphite black powder on YouTube before and they've all been not great efforts not great attempts so I am fairly decent at making my own gunpowder um, I don't want to call myself an expert at it by any stretch of the imagination but I know how to make powder enough to the point where what I send through my gun is quite effective <laughs> So I went ahead and I did the normal practices that I would normally do while making black powder, except instead of charcoal, I use graphite. And it should work, in theory, maybe, hopefully. So it's a 75, 15, 10% mix. Nothing's changed about that. And I went ahead and I milled it in my mill for probably about 48 hours just to make sure it was nice and thoroughly mixed together. I use brass media in the mill and it works very well whenever I go and make other kinds of uh, black powder that are used with charcoal. That's a really good mill so I know the mill is up to par. So if this stuff isn't great, if this stuff doesn't work well, I know it's because I have graphite inside this and not charcoal. So I have no idea, literally zero clue how well this is gonna work. So I have my tactical cast iron skillet. We're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this inside the skillet, walk out to the tactical washing machine, see if it flashes and move on from there. I went ahead and I loaded some rounds into some brass cases. This is black powder 308. And the reason why I am running it in black powder, or the reason why I'm running it in brass cases versus something like a muzzle loader, like what I have right here, is because, well, if this stuff is super, super good, I don't want to overpressure the muzzle loader and cause it to explode. I don't think that would happen. The much more likely scenario is this stuff is going to absolutely suck and I don't want to have to pull a round ball from a muzzle loader when smacking a squib load from a barrel is significantly easier. So I guess we're just going to see how well it works. I have 50 grains of this powder uh, weighed out, not made out by volume, and if you don't know why, that's because of powder density. 
50 grains by weight inside of each one of these cases with a 130 grain hard cast bullet that has some uh, lubrication on it. <laughs> so let's go out to the tactical washing machine and see if this stuff even works and see if it's even worth going to the gun range because if it doesn't flash off then there's no point in dragging this stuff out to the gun range. So a little bit of powder on the tactical skillet here. That is way too much. <laughs> okay, let's go smoke out my garage. Make it look like a Leonard Skinner concert. All right, tactical washing machine. Everybody place your bets. What do you think's gonna happen? I have literally no idea, but I'm willing to bet this is not gonna be good results. All right, that is not good results. Oh, there it goes. Okay, that was horrible. That was actually really, really bad. Um, I suspected that we might have something like this happen, so I loaded the cartridges with Magnum primers versus uh, like just regular primers. So those Magnum primers do have a little bit more oomph behind them. Hopefully that's enough to set them off. Uh, we are definitely not going to get very good velocity from, from that. That was not great. But it definitely burned faster than just regular potassium nitrate. Like, if you use potassium nitrate, let it on fire, it's a really, really slow burn. But that was gunpowder. Not, not great. It was very sparkly, like, way more than I was expecting. Like, that's something I would expect to see from, like, the firework gunpowder. So with how sparkly that was, that tells me that the sulfur didn't really bond very well with the graphite and the potassium nitrate, because that's what makes gunpowder go sparkly like that. So I have no idea how well that's going to work. But we're going to try it. All right. I guess let's head to the range. Let's pack up. Let's, let's go. Let's go. I'm just now putting together that this magneto speed is probably a magnetic chronograph, and that's why we're not getting any readings whatsoever because I'm using lead projectiles. Hmm. Well, <laughs> enjoy the video. Okay, uh, which one of these do I think would probably be the best? They're definitely not great. I guess this is where we're gonna test the graphite black powder. So this is 50 grains of graphite black powder made with a 75, 15, 10% mix, but instead of charcoal, we use graphite because it is a 100% coal. This is not going to be good. I can tell you right now, there's a reason why we don't use graphite with our loadings. I can also tell you that my chronograph is not all that accurate. So I'd say probably about half the numbers are going to be accurate that we're going to get from this thing. We're going to get a bunch of errors. So let me plug this bad boy in. And I guess we're going to see how well this works. I'm pretty much going to guarantee that this is not going to work to the point to where I might even have some squib loads that I have to hammer out and that's fine. I brought myself a ramrod in the event that I need it. Oh goodness, this is this rifle is so warm. I've been out here testing my powders, just kind of seeing what happens here. Hold on. All right. So this is the graphite black powder and I can basically guarantee that this is not going to be very good. Like I, I, I would honestly be surprised that this stuff actually gets sets off and sends any amount of lead downrange. But I've been wrong before. Let's see what happens here. All right, yeah, that was that was pathetically weak. That was, we would be lucky if that was a thousand feet per second. So that was an error, unsurprisingly. But it did go bang, and it did send around downrange, not very forcefully. Uh. That, 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 quite frankly, was better than I was expecting. I guess let's load up a bunch of these and see if we can get any reading whatsoever, because that was pathetically weak. And this is made exactly the same way that I make my normal black powder. And I normally get, oh, I'd say 1,700 feet per second out of these. Man, this is getting grody. This particular round might not want to, might not want to fit. But I normally get like 1,700 or so feet per second with my normal black powder whenever I load it into my 308 cases exactly the same way like I did these. So if I didn't say it already, this is 50 grains of uh, this graphite black powder with a 130 grain bullet on top. Well, it looks like that my chamber's been fouled to the point to where it is really difficult 
to close, but I found a graphite round that did close. I sized all this brass before I loaded these, but I have been out here shooting black powder ammo all day long with this particular rifle. So she's definitely a little on the crunchy side, but I found a round that closed. So let's go ahead and send this, and I guess we'll see what kind of velocity we get if it reads. Man, that is pathetic. That is pathetic, pathetic. We're looking at maybe 800 to 1,000 feet per second just by guessing. It does not feel very powerful at all. Let me go ahead and change my... So the graphite black powder, it does at least work. It goes bang. We are sending rounds down range. All right, so now we're set to regular. Let's see if regular picks anything up here. No, we got no rating whatsoever on regular. I guess we'll just have to keep doing the high sensitivity and just hope that it picks one of these rounds up. But dude, I'm telling you right now, these are not very powerful at all at all. This is a pathetically wimpy black powder. My battery for my camera is dying too. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Alright, let's send one of these rounds. Another error. But dude, they are not very powerful at all. <laughs> I'm going to bet money that it's probably around 1,000 or so feet per second. Maybe some of these are climbing a little bit higher than that. But it's not very much at all. Let's send another. Yeah, that one didn't even read. Even on its highest sensitivity, it's not reading some of these. But I tell you what though, it's going bang. As much as I want to harp on this stuff, I was fully expecting it not to set itself off. All right, let's try this one. Yeah, it's so pathetically wimpy that we are not getting any readings on the chronograph. So again, I'm going to bet that it's probably around 1,000 feet per second, because it is pathetically, pathetically wimpy. I guess one last Hail Mary. Let me go ahead and not, we're gonna keep all that set the way that it is. We're gonna try seeing if we can get at least one reading out of this. I would like to get at least one reading out of this ammunition. Come on, baby, give me something, give me a number. Man, that is, that is very, very minor velocity. <laughs> not great. This is not great. Not even being picked up by the chronograph. Not picking it up on regular, not picking it up on high sensitivity. Seems like no matter what, uh, what configuration I set this to, just doesn't want to pick it up. Here, maybe if I stick it in the sun, I might get a reading. Nope, nothing. Got a bunch of nothing. Okay. Well, the the black powder uh, graphite, black powder graphite, not great, but it is sending bullets, but it's not great. These are moving super, super slow. Yeah, this is definitely not a, definitely not something that I'm going to be doing again, because as far as velocity goes, dude, this is... This, this is this is stupid. <laughs> this is really stupid. Well, I got a couple of rounds left here. I may as well just load up this magazine and fire them all. How many do I have? I got four of these graphite rounds left, and then that'll be it. I'm never going to load this stuff again. Definitely going to use a better charcoal source. Like, it's to the point to where I kind of feel like if I were to load this with just straight potassium nitrate, we'd probably get pretty gosh darn similar results. I have had pistols that felt more powerful than what we got going on right here. Okay, go ahead and keep the chronograph there in case it does decide to read, which I'm very doubtful that it will. Let's fire this one. Bang. Bunch of nothing. Fire this one. Bang. Bunch of nothing. At least the rounds are going down range. We haven't had any squib loads yet. Fire another one. Bunch of nothing. Oh boy, that was toasty as hell. I touched the rear sight and it was super, super toasty. So just as kind of like a uh, Hail Mary, I'm going to do one last configuration and we're going to set this to maybe sensitivity one. See if we can get at least one number because it's not reading on regular, not reading on sensitivity two. This is sensitivity one. 
Let's see what happens here. <laughs> nope, nothing. Bunch of nothing. Not great. Not 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 the best not the best velocities that we're getting here to the point where the chronograph she just ain't reading it. All right, well, there's our graphite black powder. Did it work? Yeah. It fired. Did it work great? No. Not at all. Not at all at all. I managed to burn myself on my rear sight base because uh, it is super toasty. This whole rifle is super toasty. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below is a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I will see you on the next episode. Yep. That's a burn, all right. I'm going to have to address that. Bye, guys. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs>